Hello Taurus North Node. It is my pleasure to be with you once again. Do remember that there is a playlist for Taurus North Node down in the description. So any of the messages that I've done ever specifically directed for Taurus North Node energy, you can find those there. So as those stack up, as we continue to make laps around the Zodiac and talk about them all, um, we're back with astrology for the soul have you bought your copy had do you own one of these <laughs> because i show it on video all the time i don't get a cut i'm just curious it's an excellent book so much guidance that's like really really practically useful in my opinion so that's why i continue to bring it back up and today in this message we are specifically looking at a section that i have not looked at before with you guys on video and that is the tendencies to leave behind and I am feeling your strength. I am feeling your readiness. I am feeling the way your self-worth blossomed during the course of the last 18 month cycle that we had. Remember, we're just finishing up the Taurus North Node chapter that happens once every 18 and a half years. So you all just had your nodal return and now here we are in this Aries North Node chapter, and I see you on this trajectory of like a tidal wave, a tidal wave of physical manifestations of just how bomb and badass are the words that are coming. So take it, you know, how you will, but like, Dude, like just amazing, like how, how incredible you really are. And then you get to nuggy. So you want in the lap, please, mama, please. Okay. 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 Uh-huh. But then you got to lay down. That's a long process usually. <laughs> oh, it's, we're in for it. Um, uh, indulge in the break. Thank you, Nook. Oh, um, so your blossoming self-confidence and self-worth and your internal self-valuation and validation coming out of that, but really like <clears throat> you valuing yourself. How much are you worth? And that has nothing to do with money. It has everything to do with the self-esteem that you possess as far as like how much of a life are you... Oh, that's yummy. How much of a life are you able and willing to ask for for yourself? How big are you willing to go? Because that Taurus North Node, I mean really it's about building the life you want with your own two hands and that is a ton about you know resource guarding is the shadow of taurus but dude like resource protection <laughs> like these resources are valuable and we are going to use these resources to build something that is even more valuable and we're going to put our life force energy into it so when it comes to someone asking like hey come over here do this thing you're like i can't i can't i'm doing this i, I no that just no i i got to train somebody i got to find my replacement i got to get myself out of this thing because i need to keep going with like these are my valuable resources and this is what i am building on purpose you get to decide what it is that you are building and the way that your courage is opening up alongside your self-worth is now the chapter that we're in with Aries being the North Node chapter that's currently going on for the collective so that is where again like I'm I'm leaning into these tendencies to leave behind and we're gonna have maybe what's a little bit of a hard conversation about the patterns that like dude do they work can you really defend that they work, <laughs> you know? And maybe there's some endings, maybe there's some things that like on purpose 
you need to be choosing something different in some cases and these will be tendencies to leave behind these will be things that like i'll give it to you as far as how the scorpio south node shadow the fact that it's the south node being our karma, our experience from past lives, our tendencies from past lives that we brought with us into this life that then our childhood mirrored back to us what we brought with us into this life. And we got to see that reflection and we got to ask ourselves the question as we became an individual, do we want to continue this pattern or not? Is this a pattern that we ourselves want to be a part of devoting our resources to continuing to build this pattern into the physical. I want other people to experience this pattern. I'm going to keep building it. Or are you like, you know, I don't like how that pattern is serving me. (laughs) So I really don't think I would like to build it more for other people. Like, but this other pattern, you know, this other choice that I'm making, this other way of being is really serving me. It's really like making me bigger. It's making me stronger. It's giving me strength to get through situations that like I haven't been able to get through before. This pattern, I absolutely think I would like for other people to be more influenced by this particular pattern. I'm going to start a business. I'm going to start a blog. I'm going to write a book. I'm going to I'm going to take this pattern that really works for me personally. I love how it affects me personally. I'm going to take that and I'm going to turn it outward and I'm going to give it to the world because I I know it to be valuable because it's valuable to me. Deliver that value to the world and watch the abundance <laughs> just rain on you. Watch Like as you step into your authentic self, like everything comes, like it's all tied together. It's like, are you in it or are you not in it? And when you're, when you're out of it, it's like, it affects everything. It affects your job. It affects your relationships. It affects your family. It affects your mental health. It affects your physical health. Like everything is affected by swirling around in your Scorpio South node or Are you more dominantly anchored in your Taurus North Node? And again, if you are, everything is affected. So when you have clicks into place of like no longer following those easy, but ultimately not fruitful or productive or helpful patterns, right? That's the South Node. Like you could keep going with like what you were taught, like the identity you were issued at birth, like you can carry that as long as you want. Nobody is going to pry you away from it. But when you are outside of your authentic self, everything around you, including inside of you suffers, your entire experience suffers. And so coming into alignment with you are valuable and the confidence of the Aries North node, you deserve to have what you want. I think maybe more than ever before, especially those who are listening to this message have found a stability under yourself that is like, I'm ready to plant my feet and be like, this is what I want. (laughs) And so if you're vibing on that track, I want, I want you as activated and outwardly in your power as possible. You know, like that's my goal, just so you know. So like, as we walk together into this conversation about tendencies to leave behind, I, yeah, I just know that like I resonate with most, most of these myself as well. So this, uh, I think I'm just going to read it, read it through one time and give just a small space in between each of them. And what I'm picturing here is myself making note of the ones where I feel the most tied in still, you know, like, oh yeah, that's, mm, yeah, I I could use some work in that area, you know, and some of them may land like that is exactly what I had to heal. That's exactly that turning point I made 10 years ago where that's the piece that clicked into place and it really opened things up for me, you know, like you already left behind some of these tendencies. And so be patting yourself on the back for those ones and make a special note, right? Um, appreciate the journey because it's never over, right? There's always going to be more that can open up more that we can purify out of our, our dense 3d beings, whatever. Um, 
So let me read these, give you a little space in between each one. The first one is attraction to crisis situations. Attraction to crisis situations. The second one is over concern with other people's business. <laughs> Gotta love that one. Other, over concern with other people's business. The third one is impatience. Impatience. The fourth one is inappropriate intensity. Inappropriate intensity. Number five is judgmental tendencies. Judgmental tendencies. Number six is preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others. Preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others. I feel like that last part's really important to that one. Number seven is resistance to cooperating with what others want. Resistance to cooperating with what others want. Number eight is overreacting. Overreacting, number eight. Number nine is destroying something in order to eliminate one part. <laughs> that one I feel like poked me specifically. <laughs> destroying something in order to eliminate one part. We're going to talk about that. That one really stirred me. Number 10 is obsessive compulsive tendencies. Obsessive compulsive tendencies. So I would be so curious if you did um, kind of track through those. I would love to get to know which of these things have you worked on like already you're like oh yeah like that was definitely you know that was a big thing in my 20s like I really had to get that together 30s or 40s what, whatever it is like dude it's never too late um but yeah I would love to know like which one of these do you resonate with already undertaking some work in these areas I would love to know which ones those are where you feel like you've made the most progress um in kind of healing these kinds of tendencies um and I would love to know two more things, really. I would love to know which ones, you know, poked at you as far as like, ooh, yeah, like that's that's kind of what I'm realizing now. Like, I, you know, I'm the common denominator <laughs> in all of these things. So maybe I should work on that one. You know, like you're kind of like right in the middle of it still. Um, and then what fell like totally flat? You know, like, wait, what? You know, like, I don't, what, what does that mean? You know, if anything really didn't land, I would love to know that too. So that's quite the homework assignment. Um, welcome to your homework. Yeah. And even if you're just doing that and not telling me, like, good on you, right? The telling me part, totally a bonus. Um, so with that, I would like to take these one by one and do a bit of unpacking and see like what does that mean as far as that's the Scorpio south node kind of overindulgence pattern 
and then like you're leaving that behind but yes there is some like willing to let go like willing to have your hands be empty like you're truly letting go of old patterns but then there's also a lot of like with that taurus energy especially on the north node there's a lot of intentional deliberate like yes you're letting go of these things but even more important is like what are you building instead because that's really what taurus north node is wanting is for you to build 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 something build what i don't know i don't know it's up to you <laughs> yay <laughs> yay um but all of these tendencies the scorpio south node tendencies those are the barriers in the way to building whatever it is that your heart already desires. And I know multiple Taurus North Nodes, and they all have a real solid dream of exactly what they wanna be doing. And most, most of the Taurus North Nodes are like making their way towards actually doing it as they work through these things. And there might even be some that I would, I would add to this list. Like the main one that I would add is not trusting yourself to create your own physical stability, like all by yourself, free of anybody else's help or influence, like basically to build that foundation underneath your own feet is kind of the, the Taurus North Node, kind of what you're building instead. And what I would say the Scorpio South Node end of it is, is like over-reliance on others to guide you in the physical, to like, be the the safety net in the physical and if the safety net doesn't think it's a good idea then i'm not doing it you know because the safety net says i can't because they're not going to catch me if i fall past the safety net so that safety net is kind of the part that maybe not even physically needs to go away but psychologically needs to go away because if the safety net doesn't catch you god will dude plain and simple like you have support way more support in the physical than if you resonate with that as far as like i gotta i gotta stay within the safety net kind of thing and usually that's a relationship with another person um they're providing that like i don't trust myself to be that part and that's that's just one more to kind of throw in the mix as far as like what what might feel in the way to you building whatever this like idea this dream of like what do you want to build what feels valuable to you to share with the world um so i don't know if you can tell but like it's like personally important to me that you dissolve your barriers and that you build what it is that you think is valuable most valuable to devote your limited time and resources to like what is that i want to know i want to know because i trust your judgment I trust that you have a read on things that a lot of people can't even imagine exist, let alone like experience it on a regular basis. So you have access to like this whole other dimension of reality. And so you tell us what is valuable? How should it be? How should we nurture new life in the physical? Like this is a specific question for Taurus North Nodes is like, how do we encourage more and more and more and more new life to exist in in the physical like how do we bring more life into the 3d like that is the question and so you will personally build it with your own two hands if you're like really on fire with your taurus north node like i'm pretty sure you are um like i'm saying about like if you're finding this video i think it's very likely that you are standing on a foundation where you have strength and power to really be objective about like where are you still doing these things even in small doses you know so like let's take number one attraction to crisis situations basically like drama <laughs> you know like needing to have a lot of other people's psychology in your brain like needing to have their story their experience you know like and i think it's a coping mechanism kind of like it's easier to focus on other people's drama like that's really more the direction is like we're out with scorpio south node like you're outwardly focused um into the psychology of other people and you're doing that because you want to stay safe you're doing that because you think if you can read the room well enough 
and if you can like navigate well enough and if you can keep that one happy and if you can keep that one away from that one then i think i'll be safe <laughs> like it's like dude like and that's where the obsessive compulsive tendencies are going to come in too like it's like a it's a it's a it's a it's a traumatically induced amount of fear because you've seen some shit you know you know what's possible and it's dark you've seen the dark side of the moon and Taurus North Node is is really about like anchoring into the light anchoring into the light and carrying that wisdom that you found on the dark side of the moon giving it a garden where you plant those seeds and you let them grow in the physical what you saw what you learned in those dark dark spaces but you as a Taurus North Node get to live in the light you get to build yourself a, a life in the light and you don't have to stay in the darkness by the time you're able to hear this message you've already spent plenty of time in the darkness enough for multiple Taurus North Node lifetimes right to like anchor that wisdom into the physical it's going to take you a long time to tell those stories to share those nuggets of what you have learned about the human condition based on your experiences right like you've observed life you've observed the status quo and you've seen the dark side you've seen what's lurking underneath and so given your perspective what are you going to do about it what are you going to use your two hands to do and the thing about drama and crisis situations it goes back to what i was describing of like if your attention is so consumed into this valuable thing that i am creating and these are the resources that i have available to me i've counted them and i know exactly how much i have and this path will take almost all of it and so i am committing my resources my life my time my attention my waking hours on this planet i am devoting to this valuable cause and when you are living that when that's like what you're doing with your day every day it's like crisis kind of just evaporates like it's like if you're if you're still in that space like if this is a brand new topic for you which i highly doubt that it is like it's like when you have something more fun and more valuable more meaningful to focus on that has greater value to you personally than what the hell the Kardashians are doing. Like, who fucking cares? <laughs> who fucking cares? Like, who cares what they're doing? Who cares what? Who cares what your spouse is doing? Like, what do you want? What is valuable to you? And so, I don't care what the crisis is outside of yourself it's not worth it it's not worth it to take your precious energy away from the valuable thing you choose to create at that point it all just falls away the only reason it ever even gets your attention is because that's like where you are you're craving it you're craving some action you know like and i resonate too with like waiting for the other shoe to drop as far as like I know it's lurking. I know. I know it's under there and it's going to pop its head up any moment. And and it does. Right? Like still, even as I anchor more and more and more and more and more into the light, into my internal God self, like I live there. And still, crisis, if you can call it that, like it does pop its head up things that require you personally to step in and do an interaction. It's your job it's your family it's your chosen people like i mean things will happen don't get me wrong i'm not saying like just fuck everybody and like you're just you're just totally focused on yourself like that's where again it's like this this time especially whenever you're seeing this i'm going to say this is timeless but especially for those of you watching it right now we're just getting into libra season like today so we have 30 days of libra season and it's like this is the point of like every single relationship you choose every single person you choose to exchange energy with own that 
as this is your life's work. This is your life's work. And so the thing about that is like a lot of us, if especially if you are being drawn into these crisis situations, you're now spending your time and energy on people and things and subjects that you did not choose personally. And that will spell trouble, right? Like spending time thinking about it. Um, I personally have a relationship with law of attraction, but somebody said something to me recently that basically boils law of attraction down into like just a few words, which is what I think about, I bring about. What I think about, I bring about. So if you're spending time inside the crisis created by other people, what's losing in that situation is this creation that you are here to build. And so when you have a strong enough relationship with your creation, you've seen its value, you know its value, you know it because it's personally affected you and you want it to affect other people in that same positive way. Every time a crisis pops up, you will begin asking yourself, of course I wish them well, but is this really worth my time personally? Am I really the best person for this job? Can I, can I make a recommendation that will be even more beneficial for them and me in the process? Because I need to not be needed by this person right now. I need to focus on what it is that I am doing. So making those choices, I feel is getting easier and easier and easier as you clarify the value of yourself. And in turn, how have you gotten to where you are? And what are the wis- what are the wisdom? What are the nuggets, the philosophies, the understandings that you carry with you that help you to be where you are? How are you permeating those patterns? How are you influencing other people to follow suit? Because you personally know the value that it can bring through your own experience. So having that relationship with that valuable thing, I think is how you let go of crisis situations, right? It's somewhat about letting go. It's also a lot about what are you replacing it with? Because that Scorpio energy carries a lot of pain that, you know, again, I think we need to talk about like your relationship with pain and your tendency to numb it out through crisis situations, through focusing outwards and like not sitting with yourself. You know, I'd rather focus on somebody else's pain than my own, Um, that sort of thing, Um, which is also where number two, over concern with other people's business. I think, again, it's a coping mechanism to relieve the pain that you're in. And so focusing on other people instead of yourself is denying your own pain. And moving into Taurus North Node is a lot about sitting with your own business. And most likely that includes some really painful, fucked up shit. And who wants to look at that? Like who wants a front row visceral seat to the nightmare that exists inside? I don't know. No, I don't want that. I'll I'll be of service to other people. I'll focus on other people until I drop dead before I sit and look at it. But like, that's the part that's really shifted as you value yourself more, you will be a more worthy recipient of your own powerful attention. That's where, you know, I am going to jump to number six, preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others, of others. Like you may be thinking, no, I love motivation. I love psychology. I love how people tick and work. And like, I can't give that up. Like, no, like I'm keeping that one. I'm not going to leave behind that tendency. You don't have to, but it absolutely must be redirected. Others are not your focus. You, you are your focus. What are your motivations? What are your psychological intentions? What are the roots of your actions? Where does that come from? And again, I think you will find your pain waiting for you. And so sitting with our pain, having a relationship with pain in the physical, in the 3D, that can absolutely be supported by our relationship with our higher self, with our God self. Um, Again, like when the physical can't catch us, the non-physical does. And so trusting in that 
as you do maybe the scariest thing you've ever done in all of the things that you've ever lived that have really rocked your world and the scariest of all will be to take the journey inside of yourself to turn inward and sit with your own business to have a preoccupation with the psychological motivations of yourself every time your mind wanders into why does that person do what they do how can i help them to feel better how can i you know help them to rebalance what's happening in their world like what could i take action in to support this other person so that they'll feel better like every time you start down one of those thought patterns loop it back around to what is my motivation in wanting to solve this for them where am i coming from in needing them to feel better why why do why do i need them to feel better why do i need to make a positive impact in their world what does that do for me what kind of drug am i on here <laughs> like what is it that is being fed by me showing up in this way because we don't do things that don't work for us so every time there's a pattern or a habit that we have a hard time breaking it really pays off that you guys with the Scorpio South Node have a deep relationship with psychology and motivation. And when it comes to other person, your other people, you're brilliant, you're a genius, you you can say exactly the right thing to like get them to do kind of whatever you want them to do and hoping you have pure positive intentions, which I again I'm thinking a lot of you do. Not that that's the exclusive way that that can go down, right? Like when you figure out that you can be a very effective manipulator of other people and that is a power that you have and then the choice is, are you using it for good or are you using it for evil? Because that's a reflection on you and that's something your soul is going to have to live with. But again, I think a lot of you are choosing to use your manipulative abilities for good. You're using them to manipulate people into believing more in themselves, into being more healthy, whole, fully actualized, courageous, loved versions of themselves. You're manipulating them into falling more in love with themselves. And so like, again, like that's beautiful. That's a beautiful example of the kind of work that you could take as much of your own resources and pour it into that work at any time. And other than that, it's just the fears and the blockages that are in the way. So number three, I think is really interesting with impatience. Um, and again, I think patience and security go hand in hand and impatience and insecurity go hand in hand because in my experience, this is one that I personally have had to loop around a lot. I am historically very impatient to the point where I could have a meltdown out of my, my anxiety at coming off of my impatience. Like, watch yourself. Um, so, you know, part of me learning to play well with others is developing patience and specifically with people who are different from me, which is to say everyone. <laughs> like, I don't know if it's like a neurodivergent thing or like a psychic thing or like, I don't know. I don't know what's going on, but I have, I've always felt different from basically everybody else. And that is a very insecure place to be because I'm like, there's no tribe for me. Like I'm hiding in every group that I'm in because it's not safe to come out because these people are very different from me. Okay. So like who I am needs to stay behind closed doors needs to stay submerged because there's not safety here to come out. And I can't find a tribe out in the world that is like me, where they're already saying the things where like, oh my God, me too, right? Like so much of my relationship with patients, it developed through like literally alongside my self-worth again, like my, my source of inner security, my relationship with God also very much like kind of correlated with that as far as like, what even is security? What even does that mean? Because you can keep the other ones happy all you want, but that doesn't mean that they are always going to choose to have your back. 
That doesn't mean that they're going to like be there for you when you're the one in crisis. And I hope that you've never had to experience that, but I suspect many of you have as far as like, that's how we get broken of that is like, you know, people get to choose if they're going to drop everything for a crisis moment. And the Scorpio South node unconscious phase early on doesn't necessarily understand that because they are so sucked in immediately by crisis. They couldn't imagine there being a different choice, but when you develop patience, when you have the ability to know that you are secure with or without this other thing coming into alignment in your external environment. They can be mad. They can not like what I'm doing. They can, yeah, that's okay. That's okay. And it's that kind of ease that is patience. It's like, I think there's a lot of people like trying to be more patient or whatever and like going right at the thing. But it's like, it's more about how much security and safety do you find inside of yourself compared to how much of your security and safety do you find outside of yourself? Because again, coping mechanisms, again, like self-soothing. Like if you don't have security inside yourself and it only comes from the people around you then again if they're not giving it to you that's where the impatience can kick in like i need to hurry up and find a source find my next fix and when it's flowing like inside of you you really don't need a fix because it's always there it's like it's solid it's stable it's the definition of taurus it's like it's a boulder that just is so that kind of security inside of you sets you up to kind of like let the path unfold you know like this is the amount of energy i have today and this is the most valuable thing i can think to do with it so this is what i do and here in some hours when my energy is all gone for this day I'm going to go lay in my bed and read my book and fall asleep by 7 30 p.m (laughs) like that's what i did last night um when i've spent my energy and i've done what i can do for this day then i'll go lay down and do something that soothes me into whatever comes next and when i wake up tomorrow i'll have more energy and i'll get to decide right then what's the most valuable thing i can do with it and Like that's patience is like knowing that you're always giving everything that you have to give. So like what, what is the impatience? What is that? You know, like turn the, the, the powerful understanding on yourself and the psychological motives behind impatience. And I think you'll find insecurity. I think you'll find some codependence as far as like getting security from other people. And if they're not giving it to you, then that's where the anxiety is coming from that we label impatience. Um, again, that's just my own understanding, my own perspective of that. Number four, inappropriate intensity. I think inappropriate is a smidge more harsh than I would put that as far as like, again, I would love to know your relationship with hearing inappropriate intensity and like how that felt because I personally, again, I'm not a Scorpio South node, but I do have the Scorpio descendant. I have Scorpio, Pluto, um, Taurus, Jupiter and Taurus rising. So I have like a solid hunk of my own Taurus, Taurus Scorpio stuff that I, I go through. Um, but I have been called, (laughs) intense and sensitive and dramatic and like just like I'm the problem and it's not that I'm saying my intensity is the problem but I do think the pattern of flowing that at other people or with other people or engaging other people in it that is where again i think that's a coping mechanism because we can't be alone in our pain and so the act of turning inward the act of sitting with yourself 
Like, it's not that you're not supposed to be intense because again, like how the fuck are you supposed to do that? Like, I, if you figured it out, let me know. But like Scorpio South Node, like you're intense. That's just how it is. So like the inappropriate part and like, I think the iceberg of maybe what she means, I'm not gonna speak for Jan Spiller, but I am gonna interpret it like this because this is what I like it. This is the empowering perspective in my mind is like the inappropriate part is pulling other people into it. So when you feel intense, meditate, you look at it before you ask anybody else to look at your intensity, you look at it. And then if there are pieces and parts that you think other people should see other things that are like, this is valuable. This is a valuable piece. And I really think other people should get to experience that if they want to, you know, like other people get to, that's free commerce. Other people get to take the things of value and make trades for them as much as they want. And the things that aren't valuable to them, they don't have to trade for them. And like, that's the choice. That's the freedom that we all have. So you're going to build what you build and other people are going to make their choices, whether or not that's valuable to them. But sitting with your own intensity, again, that's not easy. But that's where your own self-worth building up, like you are a more worthy recipient of your own attention and time and the singularity of your focus, you know, like you have such deep healing aspirations, like you want other people to feel better, to have more of their power, like you are committed to that for every single person on the planet except for you. And that is what is changing in this Aries North Node cycle of yourself being the core of your experience, a powerful core of energy and passion and universal support, like your authentic self, which is, this is what's coming online for everybody. This is the Aries North Node journey that we are all taking right now is like the inner core of your authentic self is like coming to life. And maybe it's been somewhat powered down and like got some stuff stacked on top of it. And it's like in a corner in a basement somewhere. And like, you don't even ever think about that. And then for this Aries North Node transit, these 18 months, it's like that core is everything, everything. So the focusing on yourself, being committed to you personally holding as much of your own power as you can. And the ripple effect that comes off of that is so much bigger and wider and more valuable than you can ever even possibly imagine going at it like one person at a time. Like I'm going to help this person and then I'm going to help this person and then I'm going to help this person. And now today's over. And like you helped three people. It's like, if you would build a business and let people come to you for like what it is that you personally want to be doing, like what is the most valuable focus you can think to have and sit right there, <laughs> put down roots right there and then let the people who are ready for that exact piece let them come and let them nibble at the piece and let them have their reaction to it whatever it may be and then let the next one come and open yourself up to anyone who's wanting to take a walk through my garden is welcome to you know i'm growing some pretty interesting things over here <laughs> like you may or may not like it it's not for everybody but this is the stuff that I, it, it's the most valuable things I've ever found, you know, and I planted them all right here. And this, this tree has this beautiful history and let me tell you about it. And, you know, like let them into, to that garden of Eden that exists inside of yourself, bring it out and ground it, manifest it into the 3d. Um, and I honestly think that all of that is happening organically out of your willingness to turn your powerful focus on yourself, to empower yourself. Like I see 2024 as the year of self-empowerment. I would love for you to participate. I am probably personally going to be doing this. We still have a few more months before we get to 2024. Um, but every year at the beginning of the year, I pick a yearly mantra. This year, 2023 is the year of spiritual support. 
knowing for a fact and communicating with them daily that I have rings and rings and rings and rings and rings of, of protection around me and energy flowing in and deflectors and reflectors that are keeping negative forces off of my path and just these beautiful shields, these beautiful like grow lights that are the energy coming off my spiritual support. And now I am ready to hold myself, to hold my authentic inner core as, for one thing, it is my God self. It's my, you know, I believe we are each an extension of source energy of God. Therefore, we are each and every single one of us God in human form. Stella, my dog, is God in dog form. Nugget on my lap the cat, God in cat form. Like this is my belief. This is how I roll. You do whatever you do. Um, but that belief means that if you are living in service of God, which this is at this point, this is basically how I identify. That's how I think of it is like, I'm not necessarily here to serve humanity and I'm not even necessarily here to serve planet earth. I am here to serve God, my understanding of my God, again, source energy, non-physical, infinite intelligence, however you want to describe it, God is a short, nice little word that like I really like, so I took it. And my God of my understanding, this has really come online as far as like feeling the protection and the support coming off of that that allows me to not be dependent on the security that other people provide. I am dependent, I am in service to God. And how that manifests, how that communicates through our physical vessel, like how it works, the functionality of our vessel, of our body, is like that is, I think, what our heart is. Is like it, I mean, there are studies that show that like it, generates electricity like you can measure electricity coming off of our body so like there's there's a frequency there's a there's a life force there's a current of energy running through every single one of us and that current is god again these are just my beliefs but i'm sh i'm showing you how i see it and so god is a part of our self there is what i would call our god self there's also our ego self. There's um, the part of us that's tapped into the super ego. There's like, there's all different facets of our self, but this God self part is a huge one. And that that being an internal source of security, it's like when I feel intense, I turn inward, yes, but mostly I turn towards my spiritual support. I turn towards like, what do you know about this? Like, what, what can you tell me? And, and they talk me down every single time. So again, it's like before you show your intensity to anyone, show it to yourself, show it to your God, the God of your understanding, and see if it doesn't look different after you do that. And at that point, it's not that you're making a choice of like, oh, I don't want my shitty attitude to affect anybody else. No, it's like you don't have a shitty attitude after you heal yourself, after you like in that moment, like you give yourself the attention, you soothe yourself. You take the time to commune with the God of your understanding and you let unconditional love wash over you. You receive it for yourself and again, then we go to number five with judgmental tendencies, tendencies to leave behind, being judgmental. And again, I think these things are correlated. I believe that security and acceptance are correlated. They're very, very closely related, just like insecurity and being judgmental. It's like if you don't feel safe, you have a very specific idea of what is and is not allowed and you're hyper vigilant about it and that comes out as being judgmental and even just like i want to help this person feel better that is a judgmental thing to say that is like i i believe that how they feel right now is not okay 
And you may or may not mean that consciously. That's why, again, it's very helpful to take your perspective and point it at yourself. What are your psychological motivations for wanting this person to feel differently than they do right now? Why can't they feel how they feel? What's wrong with their feelings? What's wrong with where they are? What's the problem here? What, what business is it of yours? <laughs> it's like one of the questions, right? Like over concerned with other people's business. Like, why do you care? What does it feed in you to care about this? Like, that's a question worth finding the root to. Um, and so it's like, as you become more secure, as your security is coming from your God self, as you are finding this within yourself and what other people are doing is irrelevant to your feeling secure, it gets a lot easier to accept where people are. Just accept where they are. You know, meet them where they are. Love them where they are. Just like God loves each of us where we are. When I turn to my God self, when I take my intensity, my hurt, my pain, when I go and commune with source, with it, I bring back their love for me personally every single time. There's nothing that I can show them where they will judge me. And when you personally have been freed, from judgment when you have been freed from your own judgment because everything that you show to your god self accepted loved cherished not even just tolerated but cherished love 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 they accept they accept they accept and the more you personally are accepted the more you are accepting of others the more secure you feel the more you have your own back held the more you can you can hold others so the piece of like the scorpio south node where like you care deeply about the well-being of others i want to say in a very practical sense you can best support the well-being of others by securing all of this well-being within yourself by having your own relationship with pain and being an expert at pain management and soothing and healing the wounds that are ultimately at the root cause of where this pain is coming from in the first place. Getting into your own roots and healing those roots and having healthy roots inside yourself is literally like your whole work in this lifetime. You are really not here to be a healer of other people other than the people that come up to you and are like, what is this? <laughs> and like, they want to know about how'd you heal those roots? I have, I have festering roots and you have healed roots. How did you do that? You know, like they want to know. And again, that's where, again, it's really the best. If you can just open a business and let the people come who want to come, because the second you need this one to see my value, you've lost the plot. Because the one that you need to see your value is you slash God, okay? That's like the only person who needs to get what you're doing. Everybody else's opinion is a reflection of their own limitations. When somebody says, you shouldn't do that, what they're saying is, I wouldn't do that. And maybe they wouldn't, maybe they shouldn't, but they're not you. So if you know your worth if you know your value if you know your safety and security inside yourself because god has has you know come in and merged with your beingness in a tangible way if you have that level of foundation under your feet again what other people are doing or not doing feeling or not feeling like it's really none of your business like there's really nothing to judge they can do whatever they want um Number six, uh, preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others. I touched on this briefly, but again, the root of that is of others. Like you are meant to take every ounce of your psychological prowess of which there is much and point it at yourself. Empower yourself. You are your masterpiece. Your aura speaks for itself louder than words ever could your personal level of rooted secure sure-footed stability that you possess people will want to know how you do what you do and that time will come but that is not at all the work that's not at all the focus 
of the Taurus North Node. The Taurus North Node is your inner peace. That is the work. Your sure-footedness. That is the work. If you recognize I'm in confusion, I'm in drama, I'm in chaos, that's Scorpio South Node. Find your inner peace. Find, turn inward. Where is your motivation in being in these situations? Why are you there? What is it feeding? What are you hungry for that this situation is feeding? And if you don't like being in that situation, how will you feed that need differently? And then build the pattern that supports feeding the need in the healthiest way you can find. So it's a deliberate choice at that point to stop feeding the need in that way and instead to feed it differently, to allow God to feed it to however you're going to find that, like to find a sustainable food source for yourself, right? And that is the real work and others will come to want to share value, trade value with you because that, that stability that is just who you are because it's inner resource, it's, it's always there. It's constant, right? It's never depleted because it just is. It's a boulder. The boulder doesn't deplete like maybe over millions of years. Like it's not a perfect analogy because this kind never depletes. God is eternal never depletes. So number seven, resistance to cooperating with others, with what others want. And this one is in there because it kind of falls flat for me, which means like this is still in my shadow, most likely. Um, so I can't even really speak to it. So like if it's one that you have more of like a conscious understanding of that, I would especially really love to know that. Um, number eight, overreacting, which I feel like we've kind of already touched on. And I'm going to say, see part four, number four, where we talked about inappropriate intensity. Basically my thoughts apply here as well. Number nine, destroying something in order to eliminate one part. And number 10, obsessive compulsive tendencies. And this is like a whole nother thing. <laughs> So I did the Taurus thing and I stopped and I took care of my body, took a bathroom break, got a drink of water, all that good stuff. And I thought of one more piece that I want to add on here that goes along with what we were just talking about with, um, like over concern with other people's business, preoccupation with the psychological motivations of others. Uh, and what I had mentioned about like as soon as you need that one person to hear you and to agree that what you have to offer is valuable, you've lost the plot of like where true security comes from. And this video is a perfect example of what I'm talking about with that because I found out today that my new friend that I've been talking to is a Taurus North Node. And she is incredible absolutely incredible and this video is basically what i wish i could say to her if she knew anything about astrology and like how the nodes work and if she was up to speed like i would tell her this i would tell her this hour's worth of information and so this video is like very inspired from like a scorpionic south node even kind of place of like you know, interacting with another person really moves a lot of energy. It's intense. The energy that moves through me personally when I interact with another being, especially a being that's at the depth that I'm at, you know, like that's expansive to like bring their light down into my depths and like now look how far we can see. <laughs> Holy shit. Um, it's exciting. And this Taurus, you know, North Node vibe and my Taurus rising, my Taurus Jupiter, my Taurus Jupiter in the first house, like my similar path is not to take everything I have that's valuable to offer and give it to one other person. That is not my job. That's not my work. The first recipient of everything that moves through me is me. So journaling and like getting to really receive it. And even this video is me indulging 
in me getting to receive the depth of what I, again, what I wish I could say to this other person. So yes, they inspired it, but I'm not sitting them down and being like, okay, you listen to me for an hour because I have so much to say. No, I have an outlet right over here where people love it when I talk about the Taurus North Node. Like, tell them. Tell them they're the audience for this what's moving inside of me. This is the place where I've opened myself up and I've said, I specialize in this. And if you want to hear about it, you should come over here because this is what I'm talking about. I have it. It's right here. So just because I want to tell her doesn't mean I'm going to. But I'm definitely going to use the information. I'm going to use the energy, the juices that are flowing through that and use it to build something that is on my foundation right? Like I'm not pouring myself into another person's bucket unless of course that is pleasurable to you in a lot of ways. Yes. Right? Like she sends me a 20 minute message. I send her a 20 minute message. Okay. So like I poured, I went "Ah," and like really poured and it was so fun. So fun. In fact, that I wanted to keep pouring. I wanted to. I got a whole another hour in me, and I think I think I've given her her twenty minutes. You know, like she, I poured enough into that bucket. Now let me pour it over here. So again, inappropriate intensity. It's like you can be intense without being appropriate. Without being inappropriate, it's like the inappropriate or appropriate part is all about where are you channeling that intensity, and have you been invited to channel that intensity into other people's experiences in that way. And sometimes, yes, sometimes there's a better place to pour that intensity, either in meditation, pouring it into your connection with source energy, pouring it into a video, pouring it into a blog, pouring it into something that you are personally building that belongs to you, that is a reflection of your value and your worth and your physical stability in this world. It has nothing to do with one other person. It's about you. So claiming that um, is, I think, part of, too, how we leave behind then as we do go ahead and move into number nine, destroying something in order to eliminate one part. It's like I can get I wonder if this if this resonates with you, this entire topic, number nine, but also like if this reasoning resonates with you as far as here's what I found in myself. it's like, oh, this is, this is great. This is perfect. Um, okay, so the first... Uh, I started having boyfriends when I was in like second grade. So I mean, like I, I've had other boyfriends, but like I say my first real boyfriend because he was my first kiss, okay? And like before that, I barely even touched, let alone did anything else with any of them. It was like really entitled only, those, those first boyfriends. But yeah, this guy, I kissed him, we made out, it was great. And that was probably like three or four months before my birthday. And when the time came for it to be my birthday, he got me a present and I was so terrified that I would open that present and that I would not like it and that I can't help but like the the intensity that I had, especially at like 12 years old, 13 years old, um, the, which sounds terrible, I'm making out at 12, 13. Maybe it was way earlier for you. Who knows? No shame, no shade for none of us. Um, but that he got me the present. I was terrified of opening it because I didn't want to hurt his feelings. I didn't want to hate his present which I wouldn't be able to hide that I didn't like it. I would be honest and my face would tell on me and like he would know that he did a bad job buying this present and giving it to me and that I didn't like it and that that would hurt his feelings. And so instead of receiving his present, instead of letting him come over to my house and give me my birthday present, I broke up with him. (laughs) Which I think is so fucking funny. Because it's this, it's destroying something in order to eliminate one part. It's like, because I didn't want to hurt his feelings and reject his birthday present, I just fucking broke up with him and refused to ever like see him or be with him or talk to him ever again. It's just like, wait, what? (laughs) So I think that story does like a cute job of like painting the picture that number one, it can be motivated by fear. 
it can be like, I don't, I don't want to have to tell the person that I don't want this part, right? Like you're afraid of like setting the boundary in that part. And so instead of setting the boundary, instead of just telling him, like, I don't want a birthday present, legitimately do not bring that to my house. I will make you leave like boundary. I'm not taking your birthday present. I don't even want it. I don't want to see it. And still like I have a lot of anxiety around receiving presents and I mostly like it when people just don't give me a present or at least don't tell me it's coming. Don't make me unwrap it. Like I fucking hate that. <laughs> like It's terrifying. So it's like it gets motivated from these places where really that's sweet. That's sweet. And you know, if you could just say, I really, really, really do not want to hurt your feelings, but this is, this is my boundary, you know, and that doesn't have to sound like this is my boundary. It sounds like don't bring me that birthday present. Don't you do it. I'm telling you right now, don't do it. This is not a cutesy thing. Don't, I, I, don't play with me, you know, like don't do that. And if they would just not bring the present, dude, I probably would have been with him for like for way longer, at least, you know, maybe not forever, I don't know. but way longer than just three months. So the reasons that we blow things up are again, really worth diving into in terms of the psychological motivations and the roots behind why one would do such a weird thing. <laughs> like, why are you so scared of opening presents? That's so weird. Um, I don't know. This is my boundary. Um, and so then number 10, obsessive compulsive tendencies. Again, this is fear-based patterning. This is like obsessive, meaning the intrusive thoughts, the, the thoughts that come that we don't want them to come. And we see maybe flashes, mine are often visual. Um, I have one recurring intrusive thought that I've never been able to get it to stop coming, but I have gotten a lot better at handling the fear that it is to witness what it is that's being shown to me. And I'm not going to tell any, nobody needs to see that. <laughs> nobody needs to be influenced by that. But to say, like, I absolutely understand, like you get these intrusive thoughts or these intrusive pictures in your head. And then the fear is real. The anxiety coursing through your body, the electricity, the adrenaline is real. So the impact of the thought is real. And so now we're full of all this energy from the intrusive thought that's not real. That's a fantasy. It's a thought. It's a picture. It's, it's just your imagination, literally. But you see it and then your body has a reaction. And now you're full of all the chemicals, full of all the hormones and everything that's like wanting you to take action. And now we have the compulsion. It's like, okay, so then what do you do? What's your go-to? And again, for Scorpio South Node, probably pulling another person into it is probably one of the main go-tos is like, I need to go talk to somebody about this. I need to like, I need, you know, something, somebody to help me, help me stay afloat in this. And again, coming back to a fear place, a, a place of insecurity, of not knowing or trusting that all is well, all is well. And the thing about the intrusive thoughts, and this was something a friend of mine told me, which I, I didn't even know that I resonated with OCD until I heard her talking about what it is and her experience of it. And I was like, oh my God, like, I think that's me. Like I, I, I had no idea. Um, but it's like these intrusive thoughts, these pictures that cause a very real reaction in your body. And then what do you do with it? And what she said was when the picture comes, when the intrusive thought comes, basically like get up, get up and go do that. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Yeah. Let's do that. Like accept it basically like let it be, let it be true. Okay, sure. And mine is a self-harm one. It's like I'm picturing myself doing something like irreversibly damaging to my body. And I see it over and over and over and over the exact same little half second video of like snip and <laughs> just like hurts me to see it every single time. But I've gotten to the point where when it comes, I'm like, 
yeah, sure. Like, and I think about getting up and walking and getting the scissors and like actually doing that. And everything inside of me says, I'm not going to do that. Like, I'm not, no. Like, and so that's how I see that's a fantasy, right? Like, that's just a picture in my brain. Like, my body's not actually going to do that. And the fear is that I would. The fear is that if I have the idea, it could actually happen. And I don't want that to happen. Oh my God. And it's like, goes back to that whole like judgmental tendencies of like, when you judge it, when you push it away, like when you push the intrusive thought away, when you numb it, when you instantly go into coping mechanisms to like pull on other people for strength and support, that that's when, um, you're pushing it away and it, it starts bubbling up in other ways. That's when it truly starts manifesting. When you see it, and then like, I, I literally stood up the other day. I stood up and was like, yeah, walk in there. Let's do it. I'm fucking sick of this. Like, okay, it's on. We're doing it right now. And I, like a very real loud part of me was like, no, no, I don't want to. And it's like, right. Because what you want to do and the thoughts in your head are two completely different things. And you get to do what you want to do. The thoughts in your head are not reality. The things that you choose to do, those are reality. So this is a very real thing that I still have to ground myself into what's real because the amount of fear that will flow through my body on a daily basis, I mean, it's it's debilitating if I hadn't developed some of these skills to cope with it that I have. Early on, some of them were really unhealthy, but I was coping. I was surviving. I got to hear, and that's an accomplishment. I don't care what your path looked like. So the fact that as we go along, we get to choose, you know, we get to do what we want to do. We get to choose to upgrade the coping skills, the patterns that we choose to engage in when we're dealing with this intensity that is just hardwired inside of us. So... I would love, I would, I, I am asking you please to share some comments down below to tell me your thoughts. How did this land? This is my, my leftover codependent people pleaser is like, how was that for you? Um, how was it for me? This felt powerful. This, I just, I feel like anybody listening to this video, you're here too. You're here on this like foundation that you made out of your like bricks of your own self-worth and you are valuing yourself and your personal heart's desire which is another way to say god's will for your life like you are letting your heart's desire guide the direction that you are pouring your focus pouring your power into building a path that belongs to you you're doing it and i just am so excited <laughs> To get to be here and hang out in this space where yes my new friend helped to kind of turn the light switch on and be like look this is what's going on but then i turn and i'm like hey guys do you see look what's going on you know because this video is open space where i can be whatever i want i can plant whatever seeds in here i want this is my garden you know you watching this video is you walking through my garden welcome i'm glad you're here you know, and if you want to hang out, I would love that. Hit the like button, the subscribe button, share your thoughts down below. Until next time, Taurus North Nodes, we will be back again with another message someday. For now, I'm going to spend some time with the rest of the nodal groups talking through their tendencies to leave behind. So if you are working on shadows in any other of the zodiac archetypes be sure to check out the south node chapter for that sign for a very similar conversation about the tendencies to leave behind to kind of heal repair integrate and up level any of the shadows that remain in your being keeping in mind that we're never done we're never done healing it's never over no one is beyond that that this is a process for us to fall in love with um which i have and i'm happy to share that with you i hope that's true for you too until next time i hope you'll take such good care of yourself and so will i <laughs>